something? New York looks like a cartoon from here, though, for real. It looks so fake. Like, those people don't look like real people. The yellow cabs look like toys. <laughs> you don't understand, I'm not from here. So when I see it in real life, I just think I'm in a movie. And at any point, Godzilla's coming. I'm just waiting for that monster to just <laughs> run rampant <laughs> in Manhattan. This is the last weekend before I go back to London for the holidays, so let's cram in a photo shoot and a video and rehearsals with legends while we're at it. So yeah, that's what I get to do today. It's a rehearse for the VH1 Divas that we're taping on Sunday. And I get to sing with legends like Martha and the Vandellas, which is uh, surreal. This has been a surreal week for me. For me, singing was definitely like playing basketball or jump rope. It was something fun to do. I liked to play with knowing I could do anything with my voice. My first love used to be basketball. That's all I wanted to do. And it's all I thought I'd ever do until I got injured and was kind of forced into plan B, which I didn't know what it was going to be. I just happened to be OK at music because my father was a musician too. I grew up in Liverpool, England, and my parents, they have a music collection that DJs should be jealous of. I just had the luxury of listening to everything that I wanted to. Just vinyl laying around, whether that was Stevie Wonder, whether that was Michael Jackson, whether it was Prince, Steely Dan, Weather Report, Duran Duran, Queen, whoever. I listened to it all because of them. And my dad, he played in a 70s band called Supercharge. He was the bass player, lead singer. And wow, what a household. <laughs> like, I just had the luxury of a bass just sitting there or an electric guitar, and he'd pick it up and start singing to me, and I'd sing back whatever he would sing to me. And he saw something in me. And I guess when parents see it, they nurture it and fine tune it and say, you know what, let's go and do those piano lessons. I wanted to be an R&B artist and there was no market for that over there and they knew that and I didn't want to compromise and make it something else just to cater to who I was playing for and I was like nah they do this stuff in America I'm gonna go there the big decision to move from the UK to the United States came by ways of a free invitation and what better way than to take a free flight to Atlanta to do an open mic gig and then get invited to, to Philadelphia through a friend of mine that just happened to have a tape cassette <laughs> of a performance that I did in the UK and played it for promoters out there. I just happened to be there the summer that Jill Scott recorded her first album. And when Music Soul Child was just about to drop his first album and Just Friends had just dropped as a single. So anyone riding around Philly hearing Just Friends and you're like, oh, I'm in that Philly vibe. And I was like, I want, I want that Philly vibe. <laughs> there was something happening that summer and I wanted a piece. I was like, I'm not leaving. I'm gonna camp out at this studio. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm not leaving. And I didn't. I, I stayed in that studio for seven days straight, recorded 11 songs, one song in particular, Butterflies being the demo that I recorded for Michael Jackson. And that would turn out to be Michael Jackson's next project that happened March of 2001. So the time frame was just, oh, you're gonna move here? This is what you wanna do? Well, bam, Michael Jackson wants to work with you. We heard the demo. And I'm like, if this really is the beginning of my career, yes, where, where am I gonna go? When you have Michael Jackson tell you, it doesn't matter if you haven't produced a major number one hit record before for anyone else. I know that I love this song and I want you to tell me what to do. You're my vocal producer, you're my vocal coach. You produced this record, you wrote this record. I want to do this your way. And to feel this big in front of an icon, to have gotten so close and to have received advice from him in such a way, you can't ask for more than that. Michael Jackson used to refer to me as his butterfly. 
I broke down in tears. I was like, what have I done to deserve this? All I said was, this is it. I'm, I'm going to move to Philly and see if this whole thing works out. But I didn't think I'd earned any stripes to get in that room. But here I am 11 years later to sit and say that it got me to meet the president of the United States of America and light a Christmas tree. Barack Obama, during the Christmas carol, he makes time to tell me that I was fantastic that evening and he's been a fan of mine since Floetry. I mean, there's these glimmers of magic that make my career what it is today. I'm completely enjoying this ride. I've had no time to look up and see what's happening. I'm so used to just working. Like, I'm away from my family. Like, I'm on a visa. So I'm not here to party, I'm here to <laughs> fulfill my commitment and go home for the holidays. The fans being there every step of the way through Twitter, through Facebook, it got a direct connect into my everyday. Like I gotta inform the masses that I'm in New York. But that turns into, so where are you staying? Can you come to such and such? Come through my store. And sometimes, if I had the time, I, I do show up people's jobs. Like, I work at Zara on such and such, and I'll go in there, and like, you really came. You said you were here. Hi. Take a picture, and it makes the day. This year has just been one of those ones that kind of solidified all the years prior. Like, this is what I worked for. This is what I wanted to see out of this. I don't know if there's anything bigger than this. And every time I say that, there's something bigger than this. And I know that, and I'll just keep working towards whatever that is.